Hey everybody, it's Wilbits, and as we're clicking through a little bit of a lull in the most recent Futurama event, I've had a lot of spare time and resources to just start maxing out my characters. At this point, I have almost every story character up to max level, and about a third of all of the characters in the game overall. Uh, and as I start having access to more and more kind of redundant characters, I think this might be a good opportunity to talk about the game's class system and how sort of really bad it is. Now, I don't mean classes as in the upper and lower classes of premium versus free-to-play players, but rather the categories each character falls into. The further we progress in the game, the more obvious it's become that some things are not really balanced right, or even at all. The space combat missions are and should be a pretty big part of this game. It's the biggest thing that makes it stand out from its forebears. But the combat's really underdeveloped, uh, a, a bit shallow to say the least, and it feels a bit tacked on right now to be honest. But it doesn't need to be this way. Anyway, before we get into the fixes, let's outline the problem. There are six different classes currently. Captains, scientists, robots, delivery boys, influencers, and villains. Uh, although notably, we're coming up on this game being out for nearly three months now, and there's yet to be a single character release for the villain class. So it effectively does not exist currently. Maybe we'll get one in the next big event, but anything I say about them will be nothing but speculation at this point. So for now, let's pretend there's only five classes. Each class represents a different combat style, and every character in a class is effectively identical where stats are concerned. The only difference being the speed of attack for individuals, which can affect how hard it is for you personally to manage the timed hits. But those bonuses are pretty underpowered. If you miss them entirely, you aren't really even punished that severely. Delivery boys have the fastest attack speed and always go first. Scientists do AoE splash attack damage. Captains have generally high stats and boost everyone else's attack. Influencers and robots are both kind of tank slash support classes, protecting everybody else in the party. Basically, influencers are healers, and robots can put up a shield to reduce how much damage you take in the first place. On paper, that sounds like a nice, healthy amount of variety. Everybody's got a specialization, and it sounds like things should be just asymmetrical enough that a balance would provide some healthy synergy, but in practice, most of the classes just don't stand to scrutiny. Uh, robots and influencers just don't heal or shield enough to really be worth giving up the combat slot right now. Even at max level, their hits are so weak and their heals and shields just so infrequent that it just doesn't really compensate for not having another team member that can just help blast down opponents. Now, after all, nothing blocks more damage than an enemy dying before it ever gets to attack in the first place. Delivery boys aren't quite as weak. They hit pretty hard actually, but not as hard as captains, and the minor increase Increase in attack speed really doesn't matter when at max level you go first before the enemies do most of the time anyway. Plus, having a huge critical hit once is not as good as a captain who makes every attack a huge crit for the rest of the combat round. So despite having five classes to choose from, combat at its most efficient right now is almost always going to involve scientists, captains, and then maybe one slot with another class, maybe, generally because the game forces you to by requesting a specific character. The vast majority of our crew is almost never going to see battle, unless the game just very clumsily puts up a requirement saying, Sorry, you have to bring Leg Mutant into this fight. Better, better level up that Leg Mutant. Your favorite character. Aww. And Tinyco knows this problem exists, and the biggest clue is how scientists are being treated. There's only two currently available in-game, Amy and the Professor. You get them almost immediately. And then mysteriously, all other opportunity for scientists disappear. If you were playing way back in the beginning, there was an opportunity to pick up Neil deGrasse Tyson. At the time, he seemed like a risky buy. He was part of the Takei event, and while he helped getting George Takei be a lot easier, he was far from required. And Takei seemed like the hotter prize at the time, as captains were still quite rare, with Nixon and Calculon being the only ones available at that point. Um, and neither of those were free. Takei seemed like quite the steal. 
a free captain, and with Neil and Takei, who were in that trailer that I keep referencing, it seemed almost certain that Bill Nye and Stephen Hawking would come really quickly thereafter, and suddenly we'd have a surplus of scientists. Five scientists at the time seemed like a lot. I mean, surely that was what was gonna happen, right? But now it's months later and they still haven't arrived. Across all of our events, we keep getting influencers and delivery boys, just tons of them. Um, even robots and captains who once seemed so rare now have had a lot of opportunities. They no longer seem quite so OP. They're kind of getting lost in the crowd. Almost every fight I run uses my very, very few scientists, uh, a captain or two, and then whoever the game forces me to use. Because most of the characters are fine, there's no real strategy right now in forming your party at all. It's all about just trying to get the characters the game forces you to use up to level 25, or just carrying those new characters with your mains at this point. So how do we start to mix this up a bit? What's the right strategy to make it fun without becoming inaccessible to newer players? Lots of games where you collect a big gallery of fighters or whatever you want to call them have different methods for differentiating your characters from one another. The most common, at least in mobile games, seem to be used to use some variation on the Pokemon system, a more complex rock, paper, scissors game where water beats fire, fire beats grass, and it all seems really logical until suddenly you have like 15 or more different classes, some of which combo with each other, and you end up with a really, really complicated chart that's nearly impossible to memorize unless you're just an absolutely hardcore player of the series. Uh, on those, that's often the point. You're not supposed to always know immediately what's beat what, and it's very difficult to know for sure which character, if any, is always going to be the best at anything because there's never a single answer to the question due to the complex web of this kind of food chain. Not wanting to overwhelm things to this degree, some games use a simplified variation on this, sometimes going down to just the three class rock, paper, scissors simplicity, with maybe throwing in like a light, dark, direct counter to each other for variety, although I think that system's a little weird because then half your classes just basically aren't interacting at all. Plus, usually when it's this simple, there's a single best unit in each category that they dangle in front of you like a carrot on a stick, trying to get you to min-max each of those individual trees. Another similar example uh, is the simple chain of encounters, like the one found in Marvel Contest of Champions. Uh, a game that Futurama takes a lot of nods from, where there are six distinct classes, and each one hard counters exactly one other class, forcing you to shoot for at least one good character in each one, ideally. In that game, each character plays a little differently, drawing from a few different gameplay, game style archetypes, and it's a pretty fun system, except for the part where the only way to really get a good character is basically through a lottery system, weighted into generally never giving you good characters. And that is probably one of the better things about a symmetrical combat system, when Leela or Nixon or Destructor all have identical stats, you're not at a gameplay disadvantage just because you missed one of them. Uh, but once you have those guys at max level, and it makes it hard to get excited about Chris Hardwick coming in, because he offers absolutely nothing new to your team. He's not a five-star bonus damage extra good captain. There's just no flavor there. For me, he was just my 10th captain on a list of captains we've gotten so far. And he gets to wait in line until I deign to feed him up to max. And it might be a while. I'm sorry, Chris. So while I think having strengths and weaknesses across classes could be interesting, at least in enemy variety, currently all enemies are just variously statted punching bags different only really cosmetically. There's no reason to prioritize any individual one any more or less beyond the fact that arbitrarily some hit harder or have more health, but that often has nothing to do with the type of character that you're fighting. There's just no strategy there right now currently. What I'd really like to see are a couple of more nuanced differences, and those come in the form of either tribes or synergy. These don't have to be mutually exclusive, in fact they could complement each other really really well. I'd like to see both, but at minimum I think the game would really benefit from a more structured tribe system that more effectively adds a bunch of Venn diagrams to our existing parties. The game is already doing a compartmentalized system for this a little bit, and I'm gonna look at our most recent big event and a theoretical non-existent future event 
to show how they could potentially mix things up a little bit. In the Omicron Invasion, we picked up a dozen or so new characters, each of which had specific ways of being useful exclusively for that event. There wasn't a lot of variation in how they would be used. The game dictated exactly what each one was for. Each week we got about three new party members, two characters, one costume, one of which was always premium. And that week they'd also add one new thing to fight. Guards, ships, hounds, and then Lurr himself. And you had to use those characters and only those new characters to do each specific task. Most of the rest of the original characters were just gophers, picking up the items we needed or carrying those new guys through space missions as occasionally required. There was a neat little economy built in to last exactly one month, but as soon as that month was finished, all those characters became essentially useless, or at least unremarkable. There's nothing to really set them apart from their main storyline brethren, and maybe that's great so we don't overshadow the main cast, but let me walk through what I think might be a similar yet different way to handle a potentially upcoming event. One for Halloween! I'm assuming we're gonna get another big month-long event with a lot of new characters and probably some great spookier, silly, scary horror costumes for our main cast. But instead of them simply being another set of delivery boys and influencers, what if they all also came with a new secondary icon? Let's give them all a cute dark purple bat to represent how they are spooky. Over the course of the event, we get lots of characters from the scarier episodes of Futurama. Gypsy Bot, Bender as a ghost in the machine, the wear car from The Honking, Professor in his dark science robes, and ideally working up to someone like the Robot Devil. There's lots to draw from without even touching these characters, so potentially those, maybe others, it doesn't matter. The goal is to collect people for whom being spooky would be an applicable trait all year round, even outside of this event. During the event, in practice, it would all feel pretty similar to the previous event. Spooky characters can do things that normal characters can't. Uh, you could even invent a planet in the Forbidden Zone for them to do space missions in. It's just a name, like the Death Zone or the Zone of No Return. All the zones have names like that in the Galaxy of Terror. You could have it be possible to bring anyone you want into this zone, but enemies here are weak to spooky attacks and extremely strong against everybody else. This encourages you to level up your new guys as soon as possible. If you really want to throw veteran players like me for a loop, give the event a new kind of currency or spooky career chip that are the only way to level up spooky characters, at least during their event. This might be stressful, but veterans and brand new players alike would get a nearly identical experience with that, without your reserves of cash or chips being able to immediately push somebody up to the max, the existing max level players are effectively neutered. You have a really unique mechanic for making the next event feel a little more fresh. But wait, you may be thinking, what does spooky mean outside of that Halloween event? Besides the possibility to give other spooky requirements or benefits at other times when needed, I think it might be neat to have synergies between those tribes or buffs from certain other characters. Maybe the robot devil makes spooky characters more powerful when they're on a team with him. Or a spooky influencer maybe does double healing to other undead friends. You could even have reverse synergies. Antipathies? I don't know what you'd call those. But maybe other characters don't like spooky teammates, like they're scared of them, and they're actually less useful if you put them in a party with them. I think synergies and tribes are something you could do a lot with, and developing a system for everybody is, you know, out of the scope of this video alone. But there are already so many in-game that you could start to play with. Robots are a class right now, but I think I'd like to see that switch to something else. Call them guards or tanks, maybe just toughies. And then let robot become a generic tribe. We already have a ton of robots who aren't robots. Calculon, Destructor, Monique, Boxy, Malfunctioning Eddie, Crushnator, and most of Bender's skins suddenly make these robots not robots, which just feels a little weird thematically. It's great that they have different combat styles, and I think that they definitely should maintain that, 
but it would be nice if their robotness, their robanity, uh, was also part of their flavor. Especially if characters like the professor or mom who helped invent robots gave them huge buffs for hanging out with them, making them a little more viable as a class together or with certain other characters. You'd have to be really careful to keep things effectively balanced across the board so that one synergy doesn't become the only synergy everybody uses. But I also think that asymmetry could help make things much more interesting to just intentionally have things not be balanced, to occasionally have a character who sucks and is hard to fit in, except in really specific circumstances. Maybe generally a spooky team would be just as good as a robot team of the same general classes, but it encourages you to think about the right mixing and matching of various characters. How would a team of all mutant characters interact as they go through the Earth missions? Right now it doesn't make a difference, but we've got a set of four right now. Would Christmas take place on Neptune, where maybe only cold characters can thrive or survive at all? So if you take a normal character, maybe they're fine, but they take constant damage just because they're freezing to death. Uh, and then conversely, during the summer, we could go to a desert planet. Would those characters be particularly screwed there? Or would some of the cold characters secretly be good at freezing the water people who live there? Should grouping the Planet Express characters together bolster their company pride? The possibilities really open up once you start playing with that kind of system and seeing dual or triple class characters starts making them feel more diverse and interesting even if they still aren't used most of the time in each new event. A constant soft reset seems to be the way this game's gonna continue running its railroad almost indefinitely since the system needs to allow new players to come in and have a decent chance of completing each new event even if they don't have a full roster of characters from previous events. But with the sticker book that we've already added into the game, the system's already encouraging each of us to become completionists to a certain degree, giving us an in-game reason to group these different tribes that they've already started making and labeling. A reason to group together outside of just these meta achievements that give you a little bit more pizza. Uh, I would love to see this enhanced, increased, expanded, just what they've already got, just pushing it a little bit further, and I think it could take it from a relatively shallow experience to one that's really engrossing and in-depth. What do you think? Is that sort of system just overcomplicating things unnecessarily? Or is it still too shallow and you think the combat needs to have even de deeper things added still? Like different stats for different characters to make some of them inherently better than others of their same class? Or would that break the game because you'd prefer to play with your favorite characters? Let me know what you guys are thinking. Am I crazy and just ranting here? Or is this the sort of system that you guys would like to see? Or what kind of changes would you like to see changed in this kind of class system? If any. Let me know, and I'll see you guys in a day or two when the next event starts, hopefully. Because not a lot's going on right now. Bye for now.